Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. So make sure you click on TheMediaSpeaks.com and uh, join us if you're joining me live right now. It is very, very good to see you this morning. And it appears as my computer is unplugged and I'm live that you have these sorts of things. I need to plug this in or we're not going to have a show. Well, or we'd have a show. We'd have a show, but nobody would believe me because I wouldn't have any of my sources to back up the information that I'm giving you. We wouldn't want that to happen. All right, guys, uh, this is WashingtonsBlog.com. General Electric knew its reactor design was unsafe, so why isn't GE getting any heat for Fukushima? Uh, friends, uh, that's actually not a bad question, and I'm doing this uh, mainly because I am above the uh, people that believe that this is the single worst disaster in all of recorded history, by far and away. Second of all, I'm doing this because so many of you have been looking at my Fukushima work. I get like uh, 20, 100 hits, 120 hits. When I do Fukushima between the sites and the people that copy it, we're talking like over a thousand people. So I'm going to stay on this as I've promised all of you I would since day one. I don't just do them on the Fukushima updates uh, once a month. I do them all the time. Um, Washington's blog again. Um, five of the six nuclear reactors at Fukushima are General Electric Mark I reactors. GE knew decades ago that the design was faulty. This is ABC News, which they reported in 2011. Keep in mind, this was when the wave first hit. After the earthquake caused the meltdown, not the tidal wave that caused the meltdown. And that's important because it shows that an earthquake can trigger a nuclear meltdown, and not a massive tidal wave. And that's an important distinction. Because people that live in the Midwest will say they have nothing to fear because there's no oceans for tidal wave. BS. That's why that's important. 35 years ago, Dale G. Breidenbaugh and his, his colleagues, two of his colleagues at General Electric, which is TEPCO, redesigned, resigned, I, I'm doing great today, I'm plugging my computer, resigned from their jobs after becoming increasingly convinced that the nuclear reactor design they were reviewing, the Mark I, was so flawed that it could lead to a devastating accident. Questions persisted for decades about the ability of the Mark I to handle the immense pressures that would result if the reactor lost cooling power, and today that design is being put into the ultimate test in Japan. Five of these six reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, which have been racked since Friday's earthquake, again, this was 2011, with explosions and radiation leaks, are Mark 1s. The problem we identified in 1975, I was two, were that in doing the design of the containment, which keeps the radiation in, for those of you that don't know, they did not take into account the dynamic loads that could be experienced with the loss of coolant, Brian Burrell told ABC in an interview. The impact loads the containment would receive by this very rapid release of energy could tear the containment apart and create an uncontrolled release. Now, we're told that TEPCO didn't know. Well, we never knew that some... I have proven on this show with sources, when I didn't unplug my computer, that they were warned about the size of the wave that could hit them. They were warned about the earthquake. And now they have clearly been warned in 1975 by three scientists who quit their job over their prediction that the containment could uh, malfunction and do what we're saying now. Oh, we didn't know. We were only told in 1975. Still, concerns about the Mark I design have resurfaced occasionally in the years since Breidenbaugh came forward. In 1986, for instance, Harold Denton, another source, then director of NRC's Office of Nuclear Reactor Regulation, 
spoke critically about the design during an industry conference. He said, I don't have the same warm feeling about GE containment that I do about the larger dry containments. That is a different kind of containment vessel, which is also in a reactor that we still shouldn't build. According to a report he said at the time that was referenced Tuesday in the Washington Post, there is a wide spectrum of ability to cope with severe accidents at GE plants, Denton said. And I urge you to think seriously about the ability to cope with such an event if it occurred at your plant. Oh, but they said it would never happen. When asked if the remedial measures performed on the Fukushima reactors by GE before 2011 was sufficient, he paused what I would say is the Mark I is still a little more susceptible to an accident that would result in the loss of containment, which means radiation bloof into the air, which is exactly what happened when they were warned. You want more sources? You think I'm nuts? I got more sources. The New York Times reported that other government officials warned about the dangers inherent in the GE Mark I design in 1972. Now it's before I was born. I wasn't even a gleam in daddy's eye yet. Stephen H. Halnauer, then a safety official with the Atomic Energy Commission, recommended that the Mark I system be discontinued because it presented unacceptable safety risks. Among the concerns cited in 1972 was the smaller containment design, which was more susceptible to explosion and rupture from a hydrogen buildup which we have in 2011, a situation that may have unfolded at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Keep in mind when this was written, we do now know that, of course, it did happen. Later that same year, in 72, Joseph Hendry, who would later become chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, a successor agency to the Atomic Commission, said the idea of a ban on such systems was attractive. Why didn't they do it? The technology had been so widely accepted by the industry and regulatory officials, he said, that reversal of this hallowed policy, particularly at this time, could put at the end to nuclear power. So rather than scrap nuclear power, they worried about how much money they could make. And they built the reactors anyway. And now... Thousands upon thousands of people are going to die. Many more, probably in the millions, are going to be sickened. Japan will be devastated. The entire uh, area will be dangerous. Uh, I just read where Hawaii is considered the healthiest state in the Union, and that will not be the case in 10 or 15 years when this washes over. Um, they did all this because they wanted to keep the nuclear industry going. And all this time... These were, these were the years that all the people in favor of it thought it was a good idea. All these years between 1972 and 2011, when that happened, I just read you all the sources of how much we were warned. And they built it anyway. This faulty design has made the Fukushima disaster much worse. Specifically, the several reactors exploded, scattering clumps of radioactive fuel far and wide as a source for that. In addition, the Mark I included an absolutely insane design element, storing huge qualities of radioactive fuel rods 100 feet up in the air. The Christian Science Monitor, another source, a particular feature of the 40-year-old General Electric Mark I boiling reactor model, much such as the six reactors at the Fukushima site, is that each reactor has a separate spent fuel pool. These sit near the top of each reactor and adjacent to it. Well, of course, we know that uh, that's, that was a brilliant idea because the radioactive fuel is deadly for millions. No, I'm not being, uh, uh, I'm not speaking in generalities here. Millions of years. Um, there's a picture here I should have called it up. It talks about how it looks like there's a dry fuel pool in number three's reactor. <sighs> Nuclear fuel rod expert Arnie Gunderson says, the, is another source, says the pool at Unit 3 is in much worse shape than the one at Unit 4. And we all know that Unit 4 is a jeopardy to all of mankind, if not at least the Northern Hemisphere. Unit 3 is worse than 4. Mechanically, it's rubble, and the pool is rubble. It's got less fuel in it than Unit 4, but structurally, the pool has been dramatically weakened, and God, nobody has even gotten near it. 
said it's too radioactive for TEPCO to even get a look. Uh, and what's going on in the reactor pools in units one through three, and they have no idea how to do it. Indeed, the technology does not even exist to approach those reactors, as the high radiation levels quickly destroy even robots. There are 23 identical reactors in the USA. And as I just pointed out, it was the earthquake that caused the meltdown, not the tidal wave. Therefore, we are looking at an event like that happening right here. Thank you, General Electric, for bringing good things to life. How can you fight back? You can be anti-nuclear. You can share this video. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel. Um, you can also, and this would be a huge help, let other people know. Don't invest your money in GE stock and let them know why. If you're in a mutual fund that GE is in, get out of it. One way around it is to get into a mutual fund instead, which is an infrastructure mutual fund and not a uh, business mutual fund. That's how we fight back, people. Huffington Post. For the first time ever, a prosecutor will go to jail for wrongfully convicting an innocent man. This is wonderful news. It's a kind of a dated story, but I had to get to it. Today in Texas, on November 10th, former prosecutor and Judge Ken Anderson had pled guilty to intentionally failing to disclose evidence in a case that sent an innocent man, Mr. Michael Morton, to prison for the murder of his wife. When trying the case as a prosecutor, Anderson possessed evidence that may have cleared Morton, including statements from the crime's only eyewitness that Morton wasn't the culprit. Anderson sat on this evidence and then watched Morton get convicted. What a cold-hearted bastard. While Morton remained in prison for the next 25 years, Anderson's career flourished and he eventually became a judge. Oh, I'm sure this is the only time this has ever happened. In today's deal, Anderson pled to criminal contempt and will have to give up his law license, perform 500 hours of community service, and spend 10 days in jail. Anderson has already resigned in September from his position on the Texas bench. So Mr. Morton went to prison for 25 years and this swine gets away with losing his job in 10 days in jail? That's justice? What makes today's plea worthy is that Anderson engaged in misconduct that sent an innocent man to prison. Indeed, while most prosecutors and police officers are ethical and take their constitutional obligations seriously, Government misconduct, including disclosure breaches known as Brady violations, occurs so frequently that it has become one of the chief causes for wrongful conviction. Well, isn't that just wonderful news? Um, this is Prison Planet, Prison Planet Alan Adam Salazar, and this is why I'm wearing my shirt. A man handcuffed at Walmart after attempting to price match. Uh, my dad, God rest his soul, used to always price match. Uh, I would show, so show him this story. By the way, if you do support Walmart, and I love my dad and miss him greatly, you are destroying your country. And I used to tell him that. As if you needed another reason not to shop at Walmart, an Arizona man was recently handcuffed and banned for life from the Chinese slave labor retail outlet known as Walmart. They say that because we set our jobs overseas so that people in China can make so little they can't even afford to buy a, rice, a bowl of rice. Meanwhile, we get the stuff all nice and cheap over here, but we do so by giving all of our work away. So we're actually saving $10 on the stereo, but we're losing a $30,000 a year job. Is that a good trade-off? Anybody? Anybody? No, I didn't think so. Known as Walmart uh, for doing something Americans do on a daily basis, that is price matching. Joe Cantrell loves his local Santan Valley Walmart. Well, they obviously loved him too. But he thinks their already low prices could be even lower. I just love Walmart, and that's why I go, Cantrell proclaimed to ABC 15. He kind of deserved this. I'm sorry. That's why last week, when he went in wanting to get the best deal, he was surprised to get kicked out of the store. I'm not surprised it happened at all. Control was buying ornaments for his family's Christmas tree, and as usual, he went to the customer service counter to match some prices. Something Walmart's website claims that the store gladly does. Yeah, clearly. However, when the customer service associate told him that he couldn't match prices, Control, who had in the past performed numerous price matches with no difficulty, became understandably irate and let the management know. 
When I left, he turned around and called the penal, the penal county sheriff's office and said he felt intimidated and threatened. I was upset, but never once did I say anything to the gentleman, Control said. It goes on, he left the store and returned four days later. Penal County Sheriff Office deputies were apparently waiting for him and handcuffed him before handing over a court summons and a notice banning him from any Walmart in the world for life, according to ABC 15. Oh, they're so nice. I'm, some nice people here at Wally World. I was handcuffed, humiliated, and embarrassed in front of everybody at Walmart, Control recalled. Well, that's okay. They're as brain dead as you. I felt shamed. I felt like I was the bad guy, and I know I'm not a bad guy, Control stated, noting that he's one of the retail chain's most loyal customers, sometimes visiting the store two or three times a day. To kill America, I might add. Police sympathized, oh sure, and opted not to haul him into the slammer, although he still faces charges of threatening, intimidation, and disorderly conduct. Uh, they also like to do things like uh, make sure, you know, they, they don't arrest any of the scum that were causing the fights at Walmart for Black Friday. No, they threw people out of the store for filming the fighting at Walmart because they get bad press. They deserve bad press than the death of the country. Them and Drake. Uh, friends, do me a favor. Go to, uh, you can put Kesha on that list too. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on button K. When you do, you will find things much better than a new hip-hop CD. Mainly, you're going to want to go to the $5 Wallet Savers where you can find the Tactical Royal Tonto Neck Knife and Laynard and Sheath for $2.98. That's it. $2.98. One of my favorite items on the entire site. Do you own a piece of junk car? Do you think there's a chance that you or anybody you know that does could possibly break down and be in a real hill of beans, uh, potentially risking hypothermia waiting for a tow truck? Do you know anybody elderly who you worry about? Maybe only waiting an hour for a tow truck. You got $1.99? Good. You'll get the emergency survival sleeping blanket for $1.99. You put it in your trunk, you put it in your back seat. And when you need it, and you're waiting for the tow truck, and they're taking 100 years, you're not going to freeze to death. For $1.99, on it. MediaSpeaks.com, and click on Bud K. Guys, we get so many stories about idiot celebrities, like Jay-Z, Beyonce, uh, on and on and on, Madonna, you name it. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mention Kane, a pro wrestler, which, again, I, I don't believe that wrestling is a sport. I think it's a guy's soap opera who's with me. Um, I don't watch it very often, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor this guy because he's got a brain in his head. He's not just a uh, celebrity. PrisonPlanet.com, fiery pro wrestler smacks down TSA. Steve Watson, pro wrestler Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. Kane, slammed the TSA in a recent speech before the Liberty Political Action Committee stating that the idea that the government agency protects the nation is a complete joke. Uh, you know, a wonderful libertarian here. Pro wrestling and politics don't often mix, but when they do, it tends to get interesting, as Jesse Ventura will attest to. Jacobs pinned his libertarian leanings to the mass some years ago, declaring his support for former Congressman Ron Paul. But recently, Jacobs has become more vocal concerning fierce protection of liberty from big government. Since I just flew in last night and it's fresh on my mind, I thought I would start with the TSA, Jacobs told the group in a keynote speech from September that appeared on LPAC's website this weekend. It says, TSA is such low-hanging fruit, I mean anybody can bash the TSA, Jacobs added, <clears throat> before launching into several of his own personal experiences at the hands of America's Blue Goon Squad. I could talk about the time I tried to give the TSA agent a pocket constitution for the Young Americans for Liberty, he had to ask permission from his supervisor to expect it, ex accept it, despite the fact that the federal agent that he is, he is sworn to uphold the thing, Jacob said. They always tell you to start your speech with a joke, and the idea that the TSA actually upholds the Constitution, well, that's the best joke I could possibly do, right? I love him. In Australia, I bought a balsa wood toy boomerang as a souvenir, he said, referring to another incident. As I was going through security at the Los Angeles International Airport, I was informed that I could not bring my balsa wood. For those of you that don't know, balsa wood is as deadly as Kit Kat crumbs. 
I could not bring my balsa wood toy boomerang back to the plane because it was a weapon. So let me get this straight. They sell weapons at the Melbourne, Australia airport. Oh, he kind of got them on that, didn't he? Jacobs also spoke at length about the Australian economics and his research regarding the proposed internet sales tax, which he described as an unbelievable threat to freedom and personal liberty. This man is brilliant. While Jacobs hinted earlier in the year that he was considering challenging Senator Lamar Alexander in the 2014 primaries, he appeared to roll out the idea in his LPAC speech, noting, I am not going to do that. I like hanging out in places like this too much. What a pity. I like to show people that at least there is a red pill, he stated, after saying that for him, discovering Austrian economics was like waking from the Matrix-style sleep and going very deep down the rabbit hole. There's an alternative, he said, adding, lately I have found more and more people are being attracted to the message of liberty. It's because of people like you, my friend. You're awesome. Uh, two more stories here. It's 420. Let's knock them out. The New American. California bans smoking at home. Only if you actually let them do it. I have told you a million times the way to stop these sorts of things is for everyone to disobey. They can not arrest everyone. Refuse! Government isn't content to control public behavior. It is now clamping down on how citizens act in their own homes as well. Multiple media outlets are reporting that the City Council of San Rafael, California, has passed an ordinance prohibiting smoking inside residences with shared walls. This would include, of course, apartments, condominiums, duplexes, and other multifamily dwellings. I am a non-smoker. I think, I, I, well, if somebody has like a black and mild or something and they're hitting it, my bass player likes him, he's my best friend, I'll hit it a time or two, but I'm pretty much a non-smoker. Um, I like clothes, I might smoke 10 a year. This, if I was in California, I, I'd smoke the whole time I was there, just out of spite. And I think it's the stupidest habit you can have, this cigarette thing here. The ordinance was passed in October 2012, but did not go into effect until November 14th of 2013. According to a statement made by the City Council on the city's official website, the new regulation strengthens the city's municipal code to further protect the community from secondhand smoke. Uh, look up secondhand smoke is not worse than firsthand smoke. That's been debunked a long time ago. In particular, the ordinance applies to all new and existing properties and does not allow grandfathering rights. Landlords and property owners are required to enforce this ordinance through lease language and lease amendments as well as posting signage. California, a bunch of freaking Nazis. The ordinance may be the strictest in the country and city officials are proud to be out in front destroying your rights. Breitbart News quoted Rebecca Woodbury, an analyst for San Rafael City Manager Office, who helped the ordinance, as boasting, I'm not aware of any ordinance that's stronger. Well, sing a Heil, bitch! Um, oh my god, I'm so mad I can't even read. The city's mayor, scum Gary Phillips, is apparently well aware of the leadership role of San Rafael may have given itself with the decision. He said that the city is happy to blaze a trail before the vote took place. Yeah, well, Hitler was happy about the same thing. We're most happy to be in the forefront of the issue because we think it will greatly benefit our residents and those visiting San Rafael. And we think it will set the tone for other cities as well. If you are in San Rafael and you videotape yourself smoking a cigarette or a cigar in your own home, I will promote your favorite charity on this show for two weeks. Bam! That's what happens when you piss off Sam from the correct views. Uh, last thing I'm going to go to, this is uh, Kit Daniels, InfoWars. This was nominated for the Ducks Cap of the Month Award. It really was. Uh, but I've got, again, too many to possibly get to in one show, and I have to weed them out. Uh, this one, therefore, would not be winning, but I'll tell you what, it should... Uh, I may regret not giving it. Slate writer, whatever, a rag viewer. Anybody read the Slate? Any, no, absolutely nobody. That's because it sucks. Slate writer, let's ditch Santa Claus because he's white. In yet another example of the insanity of political correctness and radical racial division, a writer for Slate magazine that no one reads, 
recently stated that Santa Claus should not be a white man anymore and proposed rebranding Kris Kringle into a penguin. Now, if you don't already know why that is a stupid idea beyond the obvious, it does get there, so I'm not going to jump ahead. In a piece entitled Santa Claus Should Not Be a White Man Anymore, oh, I want to jump ahead, Slate Culture blogger Aisha Harris urged America to abandon Santa as a fat old white man and replace him with a gift-giving penguin. I think it's race, race roll against Eskimos. You shouldn't be allowed to do it. It, it. it humiliates Eskimos. Harris, you're a racist. From here on out, Santa Claus should be a penguin, wrote the idiot. That's right, a penguin. She even said it twice. For one thing, making Santa Claus an animal rather than an old white male could spare millions of non-white kids the insecurity and shame that I remember from childhood. Oh, there's just so much shame. It seems strange, it says that Harris is focused on Santa's race rather than his practice to give gifts without expecting anything in return, a virtue that is rapidly disappearing from our culture. Amen. Whether you celebrate the holiday or not, Santa is one of the first iconic figures foisted upon you, the idiot continued. He exists as an incredibly powerful image in the imaginations of children across the country and beyond, of course. This is the genial jolly man can only be seen as white, though. And consequently, that a Santa of any other hue is merely a joke or a chance to trudge out racial stereotypes. It helps perpetuate the whole white as default notion. Endemic to American culture, and of course not just American culture. I'm so happy this is in here. Harris also doesn't seem to realize that Santa Claus is based primarily on St. Nicholas, also known as Nicholas of Myra, the 4th century, real life really did live, it was not a myth, Greek bishop who lived in the Eastern Roman Byzantine province of Lycia in what is now southwestern Turkey. Nicholas who was Caucasian and had a beard, which might be why they have him as Caucasian with a beard, you mental twit, was known for his secret gift-giving to those in great need. Twit! Including one legend which states that he set up a dowry for three young girls to save them from prostitution. He was a wonderful man. All throughout history, dating back to the cavemen, they have made legends and folklore out of wonderful people that lived. God forbid that we should do so now. <sighs> Furthermore, as expanding fiat currencies act as a hidden tax on the public, that would be fake money that we now spend every day, and as Ron Paul wanted to get rid of, it's a hidden tax on the public to transfer wealth into the super elite in the top. More and more people are not only in America, but around the world, find themselves broke, hopeless, and depressed. The very same conditions that St. Nicholas strived to resolve 17 centuries ago. He, by listening to him 1,700 years ago, could have prevented the problems we have now. That's why we celebrate him. And he was white. Twit. Maybe we shouldn't celebrate Martin Luther King as a black guy. Maybe we should turn him into a penguin. You're an idiot. Instead of focusing on this evil which encourages human enslavement on the benefit of the elite few, many Americans, such as the idiot Harris, are rather dividing themselves by superficial racial issues like this one and by declaring terms like brown bag lunches as offensive. Uh, why would you read the slate? How about we stop dividing ourselves by race and instead unite together as one humanity, it says, around liberty, which will benefit all of us individually. That is a correct view! Thank you for listening, friends. It is The Correct Views. I'm Sam I.B. DeGange signing off, asking you to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. Remember, if you're in Canton, Ohio, go to the Arcadia Grill.
They have the best food in Canton, Ohio. You, I had the raviolis like a week ago and loved every morsel. So make sure you go there. Thank you, friends, for listening. Please share this video. And if you can donate to me, it's the correct views on Hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless. Good night, my live listeners.